Welcome everybody to the Tag Your It podcast. I'm Ray Ray, and I am David Van Beber. And we've got uh, just a wonderful, wonderful laborer in the fields with us today. Who do we have with us? Oh, is that me? That's yeah, you. That's you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm Callie. Um, I pastor a small uh, 1689 particular Baptist church in Victoria, Texas. Um, just go around sharing the gospel and. Just trying to shine his light and take dominion over the inheritance that he's given us. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Well, thank you uh, so much for taking your time again with us. So um, if you guys that listen to the podcast, get on YouTube. Um, we've had Callie on the show before. He has a wonderful book um, on just the whole abolition aspect, the biblical mandate uh, that we that calls us to do abolition in our fallen uh, nation, in the fallen world anyway, the doctrine of Balaam. Um, we have highly recommended the book. There's people that uh, I'm around that I didn't even know would recommend the book, but... Uh, I was like, hey, there. so this book is getting around. It's awesome. If you don't have it, please get a hold of the Doctrine of Balaam. Um, he is given some great biblical stuff. Um, he also gives really good, like, real-world uh, situations, especially in Texas with their laws and stuff. Puts them right before you and goes, here's the pro-life movement. Here's what true abolitionism is, and here's why we should get on that train biblically. And so if you have not uh, watched that episode, please go back in our backlog and uh, look up Doctrine of Balaam with uh, Callie here and uh, watch that too. But we have another um, topic that's in that vein today, um, just uh, concerning IVF and the work that Callie has been doing with that as well. So um, we hope that this edifies you and just gives you more information as we continue to tell the world the truth about things and its fallenness. Yeah. Callie, I did want to say thank you again for your donation last year of 300 copies of that book Yes. to give and put in the hands of Missouri Baptist. I wish that I could tell you that they uh, read it, and over a year's time, we're excited to affirm abolitionism, but uh, Adam can tell you uh, last week he met with folks, and there's still a little lot of problems in the state. Well, of Missouri, you, guys are, so. you guys are a state that have one of those Southern Baptist uh institutional education centers right exactly. yeah that, that, mm -hmm. that's part of the problem the the mm -hmm. leadership of the sbc and all of the entities including the seminaries whether you're for seminaries or against the practice of institutional education is you know that part doesn't matter but because you are a state that has that all of the ethics professors and uh, the entity heads that uh, run these organizations, they have so much influence mm. and they are all anti-justice when it comes to abortion. So they carry a lot of weight. So I'm not, I'm not surprised states like um, Missouri and Texas um, – have a hard time with bills of equal justice because mm. it's so entrenched in, mm -hmm. in their entities and organizations to be against this, that it, it makes it very hard. Um, even when pastors read it and go, oh, this is the only logical judicial thing that the Bible says to do. But my leader says that it's bad. So yeah. like, I, I, I don't, you know, it, I, I I understand why your state has a hard time. Yeah, um, yeah, and it's you know it's a platform thing, and yeah, yeah. I was in the middle of uh, so I was I was putting up the equal protection uh, resolution that we did. We were going to throw in Anaheim, uh, just put that in. You know, Missouri date. Hey, we're here in St. Charles, whatever. Language is exactly the same, and it's definitely hitting the the wall of let's uh, go after systems, let's not go after people. Um, I ended up just going like, well, that's analogous, you know, hopefully playing to the conservatives in the room going like, well, that's like going after the guns and not the murderer, hopefully right. kind of going like, oh, real? Oh, yeah, it is. No, that kind of got tossed off to the side and the liberal 
um, identifying marker was then raised. And I'm like, so you're not going to come at me with the Bible on why we should go after guns uh, right. instead of the murderers. And then I said, okay, this is analogous to uh, blaming God for putting the tree and the woman in the garden. This is the exact argument the, that Adam made, and it did not work for him. Right. So, yeah, so yeah, we got, we got the, we got the tough stuff here. Um, you know, I'm still going to do um, what I got to do uh, this uh, coming up uh, at the end of the month. Uh, I, I but, should say, I'm, I'm, I'm not necessarily against seminaries or, or, or these institutions or entities. What I am against is the credentialism. What I am yeah. against is the amount of influence that they have and the way they look down upon the the average student or just lay person or even pastor of small churches that's what i'm against i'm i'm against yeah. the credentialism of yeah. uh, hey i've i've been doing christian ethics teaching pastors christian ethics for 20 30 years i know what's up mm -hmm. and uh, that that's what I'm against. So yeah, I, and that's amen. yeah, we've ran into it, and we're going to continue to run into it. And that's yeah, it's it's not uh, it's not a good thing because then we're treating each other with partiality, right? And uh, we don't run off of uh, a system of experts. We're not uh, a, a, a platonistic republic. <laughs> You know, um, that's that's not the way that this thing works, especially if we're the priesthood of believers. And so kind of stinks that we're we're definitely a cooperation that yells priesthood of believers and then goes conscious issue. <laughs> um, but then it comes to actually priesthood of believers and then there's no uh, equality um, in that. So but yeah, but yeah, it's 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 tough. And uh, what you're doing is tough. You're you're hitting your walls, too. Um, but the truth does hit people. It hurts people. And, uh, you know, we we're just like our, our parents and we like to go try to hide in the bushes and cover ourselves with inferior clothes. So, you know, that's what we're going to do. So it's we we should expect it. it's what I expect, even though at the same time I expect it and I just end up just going just get deflated. But the hope is uh, this is all going to be all rule and authority will be abolished. Death will be abolished and uh, it's going to be awesome. So, I mean, there's my hope, there's the gospel and all that. But, uh, you know, as we, um, you know, come into uh, what we're talking about today. So we're bringing on uh, Callie to talk about his uh, rec most recent documentary called Weeping Time that he put together. Um, it's concerning um, IVF and stuff like that. And uh, that's another topic that just doesn't get talked about a whole lot. And, um, you know, it's a very touchy issue this is we're oh, getting sure. to raw emotions of people because you know we, we you can look in the bible people it's always been a shameful thing not to be able to have your own children so like you know we hope that people when they hear this we're, we're doing this out of brotherly love um for our own and hopefully that people that even if they're that that we touch the image of god that's an all of man and the, even if they're truth suppressing that something pops up and that we can put the salve of the gospel on on the wound of truth um, in this show. So, Kelly, last year around this time, I believe you were filming this documentary. Right. So tell me just a little bit about what was your motivator for this? I know you explained some of these things in the film. Right. But if you could maybe just, uh, for those who haven't seen it yet, uh, know a little bit of the motivation behind this. Yeah, so I'm... I have a friend in San Antonio and we go out to the abortion clinics together or did while these healthcare facilities were open in Texas. Um, and we also go to the college campuses to share the gospel. And uh, we were talking about infertility and IVF in particular, um, because uh, almost every single time we're at the co college campus, somebody will bring up IVF to show the Christian witness there, how inconsistent they are on life, right? Mm -hmm. And they're always really shocked when we tell them that we're against IVF. Um, but it kind of breaks down walls and allows us to have a conversation with them. So mm -hmm. uh, after some conversation with my friend, um, it became you know, apparent that I needed to do something more than have a good opinion about IVF and and what am I doing and um, I'd met a couple of people that had done embryo adoption 
so my in initial plan was just to expo expose the IVF industry for human trafficking and, and just for just horrendous treatment of those that bear God's image. And so when I originally started, that's what it was. It was going to be a, a hard hitting, striking. Um, this is human trafficking. You you are um, oppressing humans. Uh, you're leading them off to death and all of these things. Um, but then when I started filming, the first person I filmed was the IVF doctor. And that's when I, I really saw how much more I needed to grow in compassion. So mm -hmm. I, I started having compassion for the doctor himself, who I think is involved with sinful practices, right? And he claims yeah. to be a Christian. Um, and then, you know, talking more with my friend, I really had compassion for his situation. And, and I, I really wanted that to be the focus of my film. So it, it kind of turned into... Um, trying to show this balance between recognizing the suffering of Christian couples that that want a blessing from God. We, we all know that children are a blessing and that that it is God himself that has commanded us to be fruitful and multiply. It's, it's mm -hmm. one of the reasons why people get married is to have children. Th this is a good thing. Um, so I want to I wanted to walk alongside with couples that are suffering um, yeah. and join them in their suffering. And as I do so, you know, warn them of what could be idolatry if taken too far or to the to the wrong ends, you know, so. That, that's the balance I wanted to show in the film was um, compassion for everybody involved and at the same time talk about what IVF is, the mor morality around it, and how, do, how, how can Christians engage in the conversation itself. That kind of brings us to, I guess, some definitions here that I think are always useful. Uh, what is uh, IVF and right. what is the process? What is so problematic about it? I, I believe that there are a lot of folks who are completely – if you would have come to me two years ago – I mean I still have some ignorance, but I do know from watching your film a little bit more about the process. But in short, uh, what is it and right. uh, what's so problematic about it? Right. So IVF just means like in the glass. Right. So you, you have fertilization conception happening instead of being in the woman's body. It's happening outside the woman's body in, in a laboratory environment. Right. Yeah. So um, they take the eggs of the woman and the sperm from the man, put them together and create new humans. Um but the the process is a little bit more than that. For, first, they do various forms of hormones and um, trying to stimulate um, egg release, right? Because yeah. every woman from the time that she's born has X number of eggs, somewhere around 2 million or so eggs, right? And they, they get released on the date that they are supposed to be released, right? And so they they grow from the time they're, they're, they move this part of her um, period cycle, right? So, mm -hmm. um, but only one of those eggs usually moves forward to be fertilized. If, yeah. if you move forward out of that group, then, then you end up with twins, right? And if three yeah. move forward, you end up with triplets. But usually only one does. So what, what the process does initially is, is put these stimulation hormones in, in the woman to cause all of them to be released so they can take, you know, 5, 10, 15 eggs in one go, right? Um, and so they take those eggs and um, fertilize them, create new humans, and uh, freeze them, right? They 
incarcerate these humans in liquid nitrogen without due process until that human is needed by the parent for gestational purposes, right? Yeah, and I want to hang on there real quick because there there is language that if somebody's not you know hasn't been the part of the conversation like you know Dave and I have I mean use the, utilizing the term incarceration and so right, um, okay, you know, yeah yeah, yeah. Well, and and so they, yeah they would, yeah yeah like the IVF facilities might say we we store the humans they wouldn't say humans some might, yeah uh, the yeah. embryos in in liquid nitrogen. There, there are these canisters that hold about a thousand humans. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and that's the thing. That's what I want. That's why I wanted to stop. And just like anybody that's listening to this, ha that haven't, hasn't had this conversation. And so like, you know, we, right. we've had this conversation. Um, they right. haven't. And so we're, we're used to the lingo. We don't get hit uh, by the lingo. Cause we're like, yeah, we're totally in agreement. Right. And so it's not right. hitting yeah. us. So Some I'm people's hitting. Incarceration yeah. Or yeah. Imprisoned because, yeah. uh, these humans are being locked up or stored is what they say but you know their their rights are being violated mm -hmm. without any type of due process whatsoever the the parents are paying for them to be held until they are are wanted or needed yeah right. and that's so, the and thing that's is the reality of what's happening yeah and i you know i just wanted you know just to 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 just put it on the point um for the listener um just the fact of okay we believe that all are created in the image of god and right. the way that that scientifically works out because we're souls and bodies so when we're right. looking at things scientifically we say that fertilization is conception so IVF is what you're saying is they right. take everything outside the bodies they're putting it in to the glass and to right a dish, a tube, whatever, and then they're making that connection happen, then the sperm gets into the egg, you've got a human being, and then you're taking them and storing them. And so, right. yes, we're going to use these words, and yeah, and it's one. I'm, it's not that I'm softening up for people, right. I just want them to know, if we do believe that they're image bearers right. from conception, from, and that's right. fertilization, Right. then they are they are we we don't give them rights from a constitution we don't give them right. rights because we say so uh, the mother doesn't give them rights because she says so right. they are image bearers transcendentally you get that from god by your very existence being created in the image of god and right. so then we get to yes they are yeah. stored and, and their rights are taken away yeah each one of these humans is an individual instantiation of humanity Right mm -hmm. of what it means to be human. Yeah. Right? So, so are are we treating this individual human as a human? Right. Mm -hmm. So once mm -hmm. once they create these humans, um, before they freeze them, they they grow them a couple of days. Mm -hmm. right? Um, and that's generally either three to five days, and then they'll do some testing on on them to see, you know, how well they're developing. Um, how many of them have died during during the growing process? Um, abnormalities, gender. Um, they look at things like uh, the the part of the cell that is going to become the amniotic sac, the the part of the cell that's going to become the part for the human, um, and and they grade them right. Mm -hmm. Which one's going to be the most viable from yeah. from that perspective? Um, so then, then they freeze them, and when the parents are ready to um, get pregnant, they, they go back in. The woman takes a bunch more drugs that trick her body into believing it's pregnant, and they time out the tricked body to line up with the time of the thawed-out embryo, and then they transfer the embryo or, or two embryos in, into the woman and if the embryo implants itself in the uterus, then it's considered successful. Um, and then that you just do pregnancy regular after that. So I'm going to step back a little bit here because I think that many people have not heard about uh, IVF because they have not been uh, consistent in thinking about the statement that life begins at conception or fertilization. 
Right. Mm -hmm. So again, uh, I'm Southern Baptist. I am grateful to teach at a Southern Baptist institution, but I'm really glad to visit with you, Callie, uh, <laughs> more so than, than even those things, because I see so many great things of your ministry. It's, it's a blessing, and I, I, that's not to downplay how grateful I am to be, be deeply entrenched as a Southern mm -hmm. Baptist. But for years, we've said life begins at conception and mm -hmm. fertilization. But we have lived exceptionally inconsistently, almost afraid to deal with this idea. Right. Um, when you think about your goals for this film and how this process has been suppressed, uh, I know that it's still a little bit, you know, a little bit short, but uh, have you had anyone respond I didn't even know this. And even while you were filming it, were you encountering people who had never even considered it? What were those conversations yeah. like? Yeah, um, I, I think, one, I think people think it's way more successful than it is. Um, mm. Most of mm. the people that I've talked to had no idea that over 90% of the children are going to die. Mm. There, there, there's a 90% attrition rate straight off the bat before you even get into anything else, right? So success is not that high, right? Mm -hmm. um, they also didn't realize how many humans we have in storage. We're, we're mm -hmm. somewhere around 2.1 million. It grows by about 18% every year. Mm -hmm. They also didn't realize that about 5% of, of these embryos, humans, go to scientific research where, mm. where these humans are experimented on, grown, and so I'll use inflammatory language, tortured to death, right? Mm. Yeah, because they, they die. The, yes. the end result of all of these um, medical experimentation on humans which, I mean, when, when you say it in those terms, most people would go, oh, yeah, the, the Nazis were bad. Yeah, like, you know, we, we shouldn't really be experimenting on humans. But, like, as, as we've seen in the past couple of years, okay, that, that's so far flung from us that we're actually kind of good with the uh, human experimental testing as long as I can feel safe. You know, as long as there's some good that's coming out of this this testing and I have this vaccine or I have whatever thing for for the good of society, it's OK that we take five percent of these embryos. We're going to call them embryos, even though that we mean humans. Mm -hmm. It's OK because they don't have consciousness. We we can go ahead and experiment on them because it's going to be the for the greater of society. But most people don't realize how much goes into those tests yeah. or how many humans are involved with being tested on um, yeah. that people were also um, did not realize that the two primary participants in the IVF industry are Christians and homosexuals hmm. homosexuals cannot procreate yeah. they have to have IVF in order to get children, right? Mm. Those are the two largest consumers of the IVF industry. Yeah, and so why would you say that uh, then the, the Christians? So, so you know, you can't produce. So, and and you don't want to do the act if you're not attracted. You know, in in that sense, on the homosexual side. And so, this is an easy way to not have the contact, right? And you can keep your ethos um, in that sense. But why? Would you say Christians are leading the way and in, in utilizing yeah. this too? Is it is it based on the fact that you know we we feel horrible if we don't um, be fruitful and multiply? Yeah, I think there's a lot there. of things that go into that that we rightly believe that children are a blessing. We rightly view family as a good thing. We mm. we rightly see um, having children as being both a command. And a gift from God. And mm -hmm. I, I think be, because we start there, the problem is that's where they end. They go, therefore, IVF is okay. By yeah. any means necessary, I will have a child after my own likeness, my own DNA. 
right? So, so then we start seeing, and some of the, the fault lies on other Christians that like overburden Christians that are suffering from infertility, mm. right? Mm. Um, making them feel less than because God in his providence has not given them children. So n- now they're, they're seeking a way and what ends up happening, what I've seen is that people have placed their, their comfort, their um, peace, their happiness on something that is creature and not God. Right. I, I will only be happy if I have a child after my own likeness of, of my own biological DNA. I will only be satisfied if, you know, and, and that's where we start running into danger. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, it is OK for me to go through, through this process where 90 percent of the children are going to be killed. Um, uh, another large percent of the remainder are going to be frozen indefinitely um, as long as I can have at least one or two or however many children of my own. Then, then we start going, the, the ends justify the means. The, the dead babies along the way, uh, that, that's bad. I don't like it. However, I had to do that in order to be fulfilled in having my own family. So one of the things that I think about in this entire process is why are our ethicists not speaking out against it? I know that you reached out to individuals. What was their response? So I I contacted um, over 24 uh, ethicists, professors, professors. seminaries from southern, major Southern Baptist universities, um, Southern Baptist colleges, Reformed Baptist universities, Presbyterian universities, and every single one of them denied uh, an interview. Some of them emailed me back and forth for a while. They enjoyed the project. I wish you well. But the Southern Baptist nor my university has a official public stance on IVF, and they have asked me or required me not to make statements um, consider con- concerning embryo adoption because the natural consequence of that is IVF, and we don't want to disrupt. IVF. So Southern Baptist mm-hmm. ethicists, professors, they, those were the the bulk of them, and where where I got the the most pushback, where they enjoyed the project and uh, were not allowed to talk to me because of their university or you know things like that. Um, mm-hmm. The Reformed Baptist. Uh, sent me an email, you know, oh, this sounds like a good project. We'll get back to you and didn't reply or respond to further questions. Same with the Presbyterians. Now, if you watch the uh, documentary, you'll, you'll see that there is a seminary professor in the documentary. And the only reason I was able to book him is his booking agent is my publisher, <laughs> and uh, no, and and I'm not saying this yeah. to to like say that he would have denied. Yeah. That, that's not my point. Yeah. My my point is to say that the only reason I was able to get a seminary professor to be interviewed is because my publisher is the professor's booking agent, and I said, hey, I I, I need I need this guy. And so he made it happen. And it was a good segment. Yeah. Honestly. It yeah. Was, yeah, it's a great segment. It, it was a really good, good segment. So, yeah, like all of my earlier comments about entities, ERLC, that was another entity that like straight yeah. blew me off. Like all of these pro-life organizations, um, Southern Baptist entities, ethics professors, friends of ethics professors, um, major universities, every single one of them would not talk to me on camera. Um, so 
Hmm. It's a shame, yeah. really. Like, it's a shame because that's a gag order, <laughs> you know. And if if you're not, if you're, if you are, out idea. Yeah. And, and yeah. you know, they've been somewhat helpful uh, yeah. in, in the past, but you know, it, it's a shame because these are the people responsible for teaching pastors how to apply a Christian ethic, and. Mm-hmm. We, we wonder why so many Christians are getting behind and pushing an unethical industry. I don't know. Maybe your ethics professors aren't teaching them. Maybe they are. I don't, I don't know. I'm not in their classes, but the I know reality, they won't publicly talk to me about it. You know, but the reality is here. Let's say that there is a couple in my church that right. is going, that is going through issues right. uh, with being able to have children. Right. Uh, they're going to probably come to me. This is a real, hey, Pastor Dave, we are really having trouble with infertility. What do we do? I mean, in a good, healthy church, that should be yeah. something right. that mm-hmm. happens. Um, that would be, in my mind, that would be, Pastor Dave, we need to meet with you. Man, we are having trouble conceiving. Um, could you be praying for us about this? Right. You bet, brother. You bet, sister. Let, let's pray now. Let's Let's mm-hmm. spend time praying. Then this continues. Well, we're going to go see a IVF doctor. Um, we know it's expensive, but we think it's a good thing. Would you pray for us that it'll go well? Wait a second. Right. Now I know. Wait a second. I, you don't. Do you understand what's going on here? Right. That is where some real, a, a major pastoring could take place that is being completely thrown to the side. That's what. The, that's what's so. So disappointing to me about this, and, yeah. and your film does an excellent job, at least in my mind, demonstrating here's how you go through this. And so right. one of the things that I would ask is, as you sat down with your friend, uh, the couple that you interview at the outset of the film, mm-hmm. there's some real issues. And, and I guess my question would be, what – are the ways to deal with this pastorally. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and they're still dealing with uh, church hurt and, uh, and all of those. Uh, I don't know if that that's the term that, that people are using these days. Right. Yeah. No, they, they are. Um, and because it is a, it's a, a tough situation. I mean, this is a, it's not just like some side issue. This is a, a real huge, important issue in people's lives. Right. And they're not feeling heard by their their churches, their their fellow believers or their pastors. They're they're feeling pressured, you know, and looked down on for not having children, you know. Mm-hmm. And there, we need to make a distinction between people that are intentionally not having children in disobedience to Christ and people that do want to have children, right? That people yeah. that do want to, but God through his providence for them ha- has decided to close their womb, right? So how do we come alongside them? How, how do we let them know that we care for them, that we love them, that we, we want to weep with them and yeah. you know that, they are not less than, right? And those those are the questions that that Christians need to be asking of themselves. Am I how am I treating the members that I'm around all the, all the time, right? How yeah. how am I viewing them? How am I treating them? How am I engaging with them? Do, do I know what their needs and, and sorrows are? Am, am I really coming up to help support them? Because there's there's different types of people, right? You've got some people that are just like straight broken about this, and they just need somebody to encourage them. They need somebody mm-hmm. to like cry with them, hold them and stuff. Then there are some people that, you know, they're like, I don't care. I will do anything to have this child. Yeah, okay, they they deserve a a, a rebuke, right? You know, there, so there, there's we need to we need to have discernment. Like it does, it's not a one size fit all. This is how you deal with this situation. That's that's not how life works. That's right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, that's a, and it's one of those things that yeah, like Dave said, it, this is a uh, church counseling, biblical counseling issue, and you know if 
a pastor is qualified according to scripture they should be able to speak to this because the word speaks to it and like yeah. again the process and all that kind of stuff that goes on so it's you know the bible doesn't have to come out and say um in the future ivf is going to happen and lord says thou shalt not do it um right. you know he's it's one of those things what are the implications what is the process right the process murders people right and holds them hostage and all that kind of stuff and so we have to hold that true and then we've got to hold the fact that yeah we are called to be fruitful and multiply um, we do see instances in scripture that uh, people were barren it was shameful and they loved it when jesus or like when god came around like he took away my shame that's like one of the joyous right. things you know but you know we gotta draw the we, we can't just uh go like well here you go here's here's a pacifier go have a baby um this right. way you know and so it's 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 a it's a major issue that to deal with because really biblical counseling is apologetics um right. and you're just trying to help them in their unbelief so you know it's that's this is like the the heart of the matter you're a pastor have you personally like do you have people among you that you've had to personally engage in this uh through that you don't uh, it's not naming I, names or anything but I, no not not in my congregation yeah um part of the if when you watch my film you'll see that yeah. the, the bulk of the content deals with what you're talking about H how do do we pastorally lead our church in this H how do we uh, as members of the congregation engage with each other right the, yeah. the vast majority of the the documentary is not about why IVF is wrong, why the industry is evil. All yeah. of the it's it's not an apologetic against IVF at all. It, it's to bring awareness to the suffering of of Christian couples. Yeah. And and how do we with compassion engage with them lovingly um, in yeah. fellowship? and steer them from this practice right yeah, so, yeah. so that's the the majority of the film and then what do we do with the the excess humans that we have stored in these containers what, what do yeah. we do with them because yeah you, you know they're they're humans how, yeah. how do we go about rescuing them yeah, so that, that, yeah. that's um at the end, I link to a couple of conference lectures and some pamphlets that do that are more apologetic in nature, right? That that are more these are the biblical reasons why all forms of IVF. I would be against all forms of IVF, yeah. right? Or, yeah. um, so outlining those types of things. That's not what my documentary was about, right? My documentary yeah. is more about how do we come alongside suffering Christians. Um, and warn them of idolatry. Yeah. So I, I would say in this uh, to the listener, please judge the uh, the uh, the film by its title, "Weeping Time," because that yeah. that's what he's getting yeah. to. So judge so judge it by yeah. the title, because like a lot of people, you know, well, this is IVF. He's just going to be no, no, no. It's called "Weeping Time." The Bible calls us to weep with those who weep. He's already mentioned that, and so yeah. please judge it by its name because it sounds, you know, it's one of those things. He's dealing with people, um, and he's having those conversations. Yes, there's the apologetic, but it is um, we do need to hit the heart. We don't need to just hit information and all that kind of right. stuff. And so that's a wonderful, wonderful uh, thing that's happening here. You brought up the the title "Weeping Time." The, so there's a, a a couple of entendres involved with that. One yeah. is exactly what you're saying, that we should weep with those that are weeping, right? Mm -hmm. um, the other reason why it, it's named that is the largest sale of humans in American history was um, just outside Savannah, Georgia, um, and it was called the Weeping Time. Hmm. Uh, so over a two-day period, they sold 430-some-odd humans uh, yeah. off of an estate and uh, so historians have called that the weeping time so if you google weeping time or you look up youtube weeping time you might come up with a couple of things dealing with uh, slaves being being sold at auction which was part of the point of my movie right like yeah. um, treating these humans in canisters as commodities mm -hmm. pr property to be bought sold bred and traded 
um, based off of accidental properties that they they hold. Are, are you a girl? Are you a boy? Are you black? Are you white? Are you white adjacent? You know, wh- wh- yeah. whichever ethnicity, you, you, you know, which, which uh, characteristics do I want in a human that I'm going to purchase? Well, you don't so, really buy them. You transfer them and you pay for the procedure, but it's human trafficking. Yeah. So, so what yeah. you're telling me then is, Right now, I could go to the market and say, hey, I'd like to get some human embryos uh, so that I can have them implanted in my wife. And I'm going to, you know what, uh, I'd really, uh, again, you could, I'd really like to have uh, an Asian child. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, do that. I want a tall Asian child. Yep. Uh, I, I want a... Uh, a short white guy. Oh, but that. <laughs> but yeah. basically, yeah. you can do that, right? Like, yeah, well, it's it's. Uh, what would really happen? You go. I, I. We would like to adopt one of these embryos, and they'll give you a book that has all of the genetic characteristics of the parents. Mm-hmm. So yes, and like, yeah. it's basically the same thing. You know, um, the doctor and the uh, the thing. He he starts talking about that. At, within the 30 seconds of saying we shouldn't treat these children as commodities and look at them like that. Um, what we usually do is talk with the parents. Uh, what race of a child do you want? <laughs> what what yeah. eye color, hair color? Um, so yeah, they hand you a book with all of the basic genetic characteristics of the parents of the embryo that's available for adoption. So you, you go through and choose which one you want. Or mm. civil group or, or whatever. Yeah. And yeah. that should be exceptionally disturbing to yeah. any Christian that that is occurring. Yeah. And, and it's one of those things like, you know, legal and celebrated. Go for it, Adam. Yeah. And it's it's one of those things like, you know, you, you can't really say that we're arguing against the slippery slope. Right. You know, that's happening. Yes. But it's still the foundational nature of IVF image mm-hmm. bears. Um, you know, five of them get uh, put in and only one comes out. What happened to the other four? Right. They're dead. And they were they were humans then. <laughs> you right. know, that's right. so, that, you know, so we're not arguing um, from over here. Here's the implications of this. No, at the foundation, you know, this is Van, I mean, the whole Van Til cut it off at the head. Like um, we hit it at the foundation and then we're going to go like, here's the implications. Callie just said, well, let's not treat kids as commodities that's what you're going to hear in the presentation of all this yet then they're going to turn around and immediately start treating people as commodities <laughs> you know it's and if if and, and we're such an emotional state if we're talking to doctors yeah. and we're in the situation that we are not going to pick up on all the informal fallacies you know like i don't know if i would be if i was in that emotional state if i would be as clear as i can look at everything now and just be able to like wait you're lying to me you know, right. like I'd, I'd be such an emotional thing because I would be attached to wanting to have my own flesh and blood. Um, and it has to be. by. And there's that nothing means. wrong with that, yeah. right? There's yeah. nothing wrong with yeah. wanting yeah. a child after your own yeah. DNA. Yeah. I, I yeah. want that to be clear that there, there is something yeah. amazing that God has designed in procreation where this child carries my DNA and my wife's DNA. To get, yeah. There's something oh, yeah. so amazing about that, and it. So I don't want to say yeah. that wanting that is bad, because yeah. it's not. It is good. Yeah. Wanting a child, your own child, to love and care for that. That's an amazing thing. That's yeah. that's something that children should uh, aspire to grow up to get married and have children, right? right. So mm-hmm. so I don't want mm-hmm. to sound like I think that's a bad thing because it's not. Yeah. I am saying though is the means that you go about getting yes. that child could be problematic, you know, yeah. I, because I can say, oh yeah, wanting and having a child is a good thing. It's a blessing. So I'm going to go rape this lady so I can have a, a child. Yeah. You know, like, we, we would yeah. say that that's like obviously sinful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. So, so the means do matter. Right. Yes. Um, and also just trusting in, in God's providence to, to care for you, right? Mm-hmm. The infertility it is part of God's providential care 
for some Christians, for the church as a whole. I mean, this, this is how God is turning some people into the image of his son. Right. This is how he is purifying his church, like through his acts of providence in closing the womb of, you know, so, some some couple in, in, in their church. I and mean, we, we have yeah. to look at it that way. Yeah, it's like, you know, did he sin or is, how is he born blind? Did he sin? And then the answer is, no, he was blind so that one day Jesus could walk right by him, touch him and his eyes would open and that hopefully the people in Jerusalem would see the works of Christ that were prophesied in the Old Testament, see it right in front of their eyes and believe the gospel. So, I mean, there's many, or many deny different, <laughs> yeah, or deny him, but yeah. And, but yeah, but that was, that's what that was. He was born blind for that purpose. There's no right. chance back of everything. There's only God's providence back of everything. Um, and, and so again, that, that even plays into how people get caught up and all this, but uh, you know, to to move this along, um, you are uh, with us, outspoken abolitionist. You know, we we yeah. we've talked about doctrine of ba Balaam. We're talking about uh, you know murdering babies. Um, yeah. Is this an abolitionist film? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I would say so. So here's here's the way I look at that question, right? Yeah. So what is abolitionist content, right? Mm -hmm. I would argue that it. It's gospel sharing content, what, what, whatever that happens to be, right? So what are, for example, does a Christian have to go to an abortion clinic to be anti-abortion? No, right? You know, that, like you don't have to go. I mean, it's logistically not feasible for the vast majority of Christians, right? They, they don't live mm -hmm. anywhere near one, right? But what do you do? What what gifts has God given to you and how are you leveraging those gifts for the kingdom of God? Right. Mm -hmm. So what is abolition about? Right. What, what, what is it that we were trying to abolish? Well, unjust treatment of humans. Right. Basically, what it's coming down to is loving God and loving your neighbor. Mm -hmm. So it is the content that you are putting out intended to engender love for God and that, and as a manifestation of your love for God, love for the human next to you or just humans in general. If that's the case, then I would say that that is abolitionist content, if that makes sense. I'd, yeah. I'd, we we yeah. need to like be able to move up and down this hierarchy of, of resolution, right? And, and sometimes take a, a, a much higher look down that's less resolution and go are you are, are you loving god and loving neighbor okay now let's zoom in on the particular aspect of that form of love for neighbor yeah. and does it align so one of the things that i imagine has happened as you made this film was you have now changed your answer to that atheist or to that secularist on the college campus yeah. when they ask about IVF. Now it's uh, the same. Been the, the exact same is, from the beginning. Ha, but has it developed a little oh, bit? Oh, yeah, no, for and sure. It's, yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. I'm sure your yeah. answer, I'm sure you were against it, but like now you have a, a, a greater insight that they opened yeah, up Pandora's sure. box now. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, before it was just, no, they're created in the image of God, they're human, so I'm against IVF. But now I can, um, use god's book of, of nature to shut the mouth of the fool and expose to them their inconsistencies and how ivf is completely inconsistent with god's ordained or prescribed view of procreation excellent so i definitely see this project as a form of of christian journalism uh, professionally, I should say, as a communication professor, um, there is uh, always in my mind a desire to see Christians putting out content that is good. Uh, obviously, practically, it's something that we aspire to do with our podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess the big piece that I would say is as a Christian who is putting out content that is unique, 
Um, do you have advice for aspiring folks who are wanting to do things like this? Are there other topics that you think could be covered that are really yeah. not getting that type of coverage? Because this is huge to me. I don't know of anyone else who's covered this in this way. Yeah. Um, so advice I would get, because that's multiple questions you just asked. Yeah. Advice that, that I would give <laughs> is just go and do, just go and do whatever it is, right? And it doesn't matter wh whether it's like dealing with music, writing, making films, raising children. Ask yourself, what resources has God gifted me with and am I leveraging those gifts for the kingdom of God? Um, I had no film experience, no film equipment, and zero dollar budget when I did this. I, I filmed it on my cellular telephone, right? Um, now, the, I found out pretty quickly that there are certain pieces of equipment that makes for good content versus like really trash content. But, you know, I had Christians around me that liked the project and were like, hey, let me buy you a microphone. Right. So um, then it was just like messing around with the footage and trying to hold back a little of my creative uh, psychopathy in, in a certain <laughs> way. Uh, I, I had to make it a, a appealing to visually appealing to, to other people right so th there were there would have been the the things that i enjoy visually or not necessarily what other people will hold their their uh attention so i had, I had to like kick that back a bunch of notches right hmm. um I, I think a lot of it was good i i enjoyed doing it um as far as topics that i have next obviously depending on how my wife's cancer treatment goes and, mm -hmm. and what happens after that over the next couple of weeks. Um, I would like to film another documentary on self-managed abortion mm -hmm. and the rise of self-managed abortion mm -hmm. over the past couple of years and how it has um, effectively transitioned the killing of preborn children out of healthcare facilities and moved it to the home. Yeah. Yeah, and that'd be a wonderful thing, especially as uh, we continue on and post Roe America. This is the one of the issues that, you know, in, in the uh, resolutions committee was uh, at the very beginning. Hey, you understand that uh, Roe versus Wade's gone and, uh, and here in Missouri, abortion is banned. And I immediately went 46 bucks at Walmart if I was a pregnant woman right now and I wanted to murder my baby, 46 bucks down the street from me. And, yeah, and uh, if I was yeah, like, so. you know, 20, 25 weeks, I could still spend $100 or get a grant and get it for free and still kill the yep. child at home. Yep. Like, yep. it's all over online, hmm. everywhere. Yeah. How yep. to do it. Hmm. Way into late terms. Wow. So. Wow. Yep. So we need to, you know, get on it as soon as possible now. And, uh, you know, dude, like, uh, yeah, we'll always uh, bring you on and uh, definitely have your back and uh, be beside you in all this stuff. So I guess you just introduced something to me to, to look into because I didn't know how far that stuff went. So it's not just pills, but uh, basically um, murder in a box uh, yeah. sent to your house. That is uh, very, um, uh, wow. Uh, yeah. Uh, it there's was not in a, some time yeah. and I'll give you the, the newest numbers. I did a lecture yeah. on it the, earlier this year in February. And they've produced more numbers that are even hmm. crazier than, uh, hmm. than uh, how how bad and prolific it is right now. Yeah. Well, wow. So let me finish with this thought, as I know our time is coming to a conclusion. But what do you hope people will do uh, after they view this film? Uh, what is the goal for individuals in their response? Because um, I think that's critical. Um because, man, when I watch it, I'm like, I had no clue. Now I have some ammunition to engage some other pastors with. I now have knowledge. If someone comes to me, I'm going to do everything I can to say, no, 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 there's a different way. Um, yeah. But what were you hoping? I, I hope, one, that people are encouraged by it, right? That, that I hope that I was able to communicate the, this balance of showing compassion and love 
to Christians that are suffering from infertility, not make light of it, not tell them they're wrong, or, but really join them in their suffering and at the same time help them to see what IVF really is and what it does. And what I would hope is that churches, pastors, and Christians join together and rally around these couples, one, and two, say, hey, I'm, especially in large churches, the, the chances of you having children in freezers from your congregation are pretty good. So what, what are we going to do as a church to rescue these children that belong to our congregation? Right hmm. there, there's this covenantal relationship with, yeah. with parents to their children, and these children are just as much a responsibility of our local congregation as the two-year-old child. Right. So, how can we, as the church, come alongside and help you bring these children to their telos, which is to love God and enjoy Him forever? Right. To, to worship Christ. How can we, as a church, help you to rescue these child the, the that you have frozen so that they can worship christ mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so th that's what i that's my hope um that it, it intrigues people um enough to you know, go to some of the resources that i link or, or look up your own there, i mean there's some good stuff out there so yeah Wow. Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, care about these two million children that we have in frozen prisons across the United States, you know, yeah, that's a, yeah. that's a lot of humans. And it, if you start thinking, right, um, at least 90 percent attrition rate and there's a, well, somewhere around like eight million humans that were created in IVF that are walking around right now in our country. So how many how many children had to die, yeah, in order to have those eight million? Now, and um, I love those eight million children. They're they're humans. Yeah, well, one hundred. They 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 are image bearing, lovely humans. But what I am saying is, how many died? Yeah. It makes yep. me shudder when I think about those numbers. Um, that's not a joke. Um, Callie, we're so grateful that you give us your time and yeah. your energy, and uh, we continue to pray uh, for your wife. When I Thank see you post mm -hmm. on Facebook, uh, I don't do a whole lot of scrolling on Facebook, uh, but man, when your stuff comes up, I pray. And I just encourage anyone who watches this to make sure they watch Weeping Time and share it through your social media. Uh, share Please it do. with people in your church. Uh, email it out. Put it on your church website. Uh, all things that you can do. So, Adam? Yeah. Well, again, thank you so much for your time. It's always awesome to be able to work with you, especially twice now. Um, so let's uh, continue it going uh, with your work, and uh, let's just walk beside you, on, and we can bring this stuff to our congregations and stuff, too. And you guys that are listening, bring this um, stuff to light um, in your uh, churches and stuff like that. Talk about it and uh, love one another and lead each other to love one another and love your babies um, frozen or in the womb or out of the womb, even if they're 64 years old and you're older than them, they're still your babies. Love them. And, uh, you know, that's just, that's the way we got to work. So with that said, this is the tag you're at podcast. I'm Ray Ray. I'm David Van Bever. And Soli. Deo. Gloria.